I probably had been doing a proverb a day for like at least three months, okay? And so when you read proverbs so much, you start to see the words like knowledge, wisdom, understanding, insight. They all just repeat and repeat and repeat. And so at that point, it's like you got to take that into your hands and be like, what does each of these things mean? And why are they all... Um, repeated so much and used in these different contexts. Hi guys, welcome to the video. Hope you're doing well. If you're new here, my name is Naima. I make faith and lifestyle videos and this is going to be one of the ones that's like, well, this video is going to be a Bible and coffee time video. I don't have coffee because it's summer and I've gone three days without coffee. It's it, like, I don't know I'm proud of myself but I do have my water so get your water get your coffee I don't know this video shouldn't be like too too long but I would still like get your stuff together because you never know in this video we're going to be looking at a lot of different people in the Bible a lot of different chapters and doing a lot of cross references because in this video I want to take a deep dive into three words understanding knowledge and wisdom because in proverbs 24 which is where we're going to start it talks about those three things in terms of building a house and i just feel like god has and i i said this in one of the lessons videos that i just feel like god has been teaching me so much with that word understanding and like what does it mean to understand the Lord and understand what he has done for you and how does that affect your faith and how does that affect how you live how you love others how you love the Lord and how you serve the Lord and it's just a huge topic because when you once you unlock this understanding and knowledge and wisdom of the Lord and you kind of get the ratios right and you are like oh wow wisdom I can ask God for wisdom and all of these things start lining up I think it really opens up a pathway for your relationship with God and it deepens your love for the Lord also I'm in this car I'm in Puerto Rico right now um this is my abuela's car. All right, we're just gonna, let's do this. Let's read Proverbs 24, verses one through six. Verse one. Be not envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for their hearts devise violence, and their lips talk of trouble. This is the part, ready? Verse three. By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is full of strength, and a man of knowledge enhances his might. For by wise guidance you can wage your war, and in abundance of counselors there is victory. With that framework in mind, let's first dive into the definitions of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So starting off with wisdom, which in Proverbs 24 it says, By wisdom a house is built. The definition of wisdom is the quality of of having experience, knowledge, good judgment, or insight. Okay, then I looked up wisdom Bible definition and what came up was knowledge and the capacity to make due use of it. And in James 1 verses 5 through 7, we can we learn that we can ask for wisdom. Um, and then also in 1 Corinthians 12 8, we learn that wisdom is a spiritual gift. So those are some things for wisdom. Now let's move on to understanding. When you look up the definition of understanding, it says comprehension, grasp, awareness. The opposite of understanding is ignorance and misunderstanding. When you look up the Bible definition for understanding, it says under to understand God means understanding that he is savior and redeemer. Okay, for knowledge, when you look up that definition, it says facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through experience, education, so it's similar to understanding, but a little bit more factual. Knowledge is also listed in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 as a spiritual gift, and that's kind of associated with the ability to teach the faith. Another good way to put these three things all together, one thing like a commentary said was, spiritual values must be built through wisdom and established by understanding. And so if that kind of helps you frame those words, um, so there is that I don't know what you're thinking right now but in my mind like that is so fascinating three Proverbs 24 verses 3 through 4 again with that knowledge 
with that knowledge. By wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And so there's kind of this comparison to um, building a house and those steps. All right, now we're going to do some cross-references. So there's a lot of cross-references. I think first we're going to do the bigger ones, and these are more related to wisdom. And first we're going to look at King Solomon in 1 King 3. So if you've, like, grown up in church or you're a tiny bit familiar with, like, that kind of those stories in the Old Testament. King Solomon was the one who had like a ton of wives. We're going to read not the whole thing, but maybe half. All right, verse one. Solomon made a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. The people were sacrificing at high places. However, because no one, no house had yet been built for the name of the Lord, Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the statues of David, his father, only he sacrificed and made offerings at the high places. And the king went to Gideon and to sacrifice there, for that was the great place Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. Verse 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. Verse 6. This is important. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in my place of David, my father. Although I am he, I am but a child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for a multitude. Verse 9. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding, mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and had not asked for yourself long life, or riches, or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. Almost done. I give you also what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare to you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statues, statu statues, statues, and my commandments, as your father David walked, I will lengthen your days. Um, and so, I guess that was a dream. And so, we're not going to finish. The next section of that chapter is titled in the ESV, um, Solomon's Wisdom. It's verses 16 through 28. We're not going to read that, but because that, I just wanted us to get that idea, kind of. Another thing for context to keep in mind, um, according to like what I researched and what was on the internet, Solomon was crowned king when he was about 20 years old. So he was really, really, really young for a king. And so he's kind of desperate in a situation like for wisdom and how to govern his people. And so I think this is important in our study of these words to understand that like we can ask for wisdom and we can ask for understanding and God happily grants it to us and God is actually pleased when we go to him and ask him for wisdom and knowledge and that's just important to know and that's an Old Testament example. So this one's going to be a lot shorter. We're going to go to Matthew 7 24 through 27. Hopefully it's not terrible. <laughs> uh, all right let's do this. Verse 24. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall 
because it had been founded on the rocks. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Verse 27, And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And that's just kind of, yeah, comparing the wise man, the foolish man, and how when you're building your house, when you're, when you are taking steps in your life, it's, it's all just like coming from a foundation and um, Cody Carnes has a song like he has a version without him with Maverick City but it's based on this song I mean based on this chapter and um, it's just like we must take wisdom and be wise when we are building our foundation because the foundation and when we talk about foundation it's like the foundation of our faith because from the foundation of our faith comes the foundation of our life, right? And so if we're not careful in building our foundation and making sure it's set on good theology and on sound wisdom, and we're making sure that we're tending to any crack in the foundation, that maybe it's this issue or maybe we're struggling with this and it's a crack in the foundation, that we, we must be wise in, in patching it up so that the next layers of our lives are built on this firm foundation that cannot be shaken, that when the rain comes and the floods come, that the house does not fall because it is built on wisdom. So, that... I'm not sure that that is like directly related to the proverb that we read, but um, kind of the same comparison of building a house. This is the last like bigger cross reference and then there's going to be little ones that I'm just going to list off to you. Okay, so James 3, 13 through 18. This is another one for wisdom. And you'll find that like if you look it up, they kind of are all synonyms of each other. Um, but they're used in slightly different ways. So, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitterness... Whoa, no. <laughs> but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy, and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is, shown, is sown in peace by those who make peace. That's a great chapter and I think a really good point when it comes to wisdom, how there's earthly wisdom and then there's biblical wisdom. So I think that that really speaks for itself and I think that my role in this video is kind of to put these chapters and verses together to display them out to you, right? And then you can just do your thing with it because I think this speaks for itself. Um, and I, I feel really called out when it says, but verse 14, but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast and be false, false in the truth. Like we are called to have no selfish ambition um, when we serve the Lord. And I just, I don't know. This is really, really good. Verse 17, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. I had been re reading Proverbs for so long, like probably had been doing a proverb a day for like at least three months, okay? And so when you read Proverbs so much, you start to see the words like knowledge, wisdom, understanding, insight, they all just repeat and repeat and repeat. And so at that point, it's like you gotta take that into your hands and be like, what does each of these things mean and why are they all, um, repeated so much and used in these different contexts. This helps me. This might overwhelm you looking at something like this. This is how I take notes. This is how I study the Word of God. And this is just a joy for me to do. Guys, this is the home stretch. I'm so... Oh, that breeze. Oh, God is good. God is good. Yep. Alright, let's start off. I'm just gonna read what I have here, okay? 
A house is built on wisdom. Proverbs 120 says wisdom cries aloud in the street. Um, it also says to call wisdom your sister. And it in Proverbs 2 7 it says he stores up sound wisdom for the upright the Lord stores up sound wisdom for the upright for the blameless for the people who are walking with the Lord and Proverbs 1 21 it says wisdom cries loud in the streets it's just that wisdom is not hiding wisdom wants to be found it's just that you got to go and look for it you got to ask the Lord for it okay and then this is gonna be fast we're gonna do this okay ready um okay this is super interesting ready this is super interesting too. Okay, ready for this? The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. Proverbs 3.19. Crazy. Um, okay, Proverbs 3.7. Be not wise in your own eyes. Kind of like what James was saying in what we just read. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. <laughs> and whatever you get, get insight. Proverbs or seven like lit like get it you want wisdom get it like that's the beginning of wisdom it's not a puzzle it's just like lord would you please give me wisdom and it's being in the word and it's just like wisdom it's right there hello and it says to call insight you are my intimate friend let's let's move on to the rooms of the house here okay now this is proverbs eight twelve. i wisdom dwell with prudence and i find knowledge and discretion and let's go to knowledge right by knowledge the rooms are filled the wise of heart will receive commandments proverbs 10 8 by his knowledge the depths broke the, oh no wait by his knowledge the deeps broke open and the clouds dropped down 320 knowledge will be pleasant to your soul proverbs 2 10 by understanding it is established raise your voice for understanding proverbs 2 3 by understanding he established the heavens proverbs 3 19 fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge fools despise wisdom and instruction proverbs 1 7 the wise lay up knowledge 10 14 on the lips of him who has understanding wisdom is found proverbs 10 13 i have counsel and sound wisdom i have insight semicolon i have strength um if you seek it like silver and search for it as hidden treasure then you will understand the fear of the lord from his mouth come understanding no from his mouth come knowledge and understanding proverbs 2 4 through 5. so those are a couple cross references that i have there's literally a million like you could go through the whole bible and just like take the verse write the verse down every time it says wisdom or knowledge or understanding like we can't do it all in this video but this is to prove that they're all kind of related and how important each thing is and like even that the lord established the heaven um even that the lord established the heavens through understanding and established the earth by wisdom like that's crazy to me oh so i just i want to put it out there as like maybe a reflection prompt question um how does all of this affect the way we love and seek the lord and how does it affect our prayer life i think that this concept is fundamental and i think that once it clicked like it's not until you understand what the lord has done for you that you were able to serve him rightly and you don't have to try to figure that out on your own literally it's just reading the bible especially the old testament i feel like just diving into books that might scare you a little bit and seeking that understanding and trying to figure out like what was the world like before jesus how was the world when jesus was here what happened to jesus why did it happen how was the world after jesus right um so I think those are important things and it's not something that needs to be rushed at all this lighting hello um it's not something that needs to be rushed at all this type of understanding i think that um we need to be patient with ourselves because this is such a huge thing and really just take time to piece these things together and there's just such a moment of i think joy when like you do piece things together and you are able to make connections and that just takes time and i really 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 encourage you to just continue seeking continue searching and just be diligent about your search and 
God is so faithful to God is just so faithful to reveal himself when we seek him like that and it pleases him um because again understanding I think is something huge yeah I will also point you in the direction of the enduring word commentary um you can just search up Proverbs 24 commentary enduring word it's a great line by line commentary and it's helped me a lot when reading the Old Testament and when I have been seeking understanding um, I'm praying for you guys. I hope that this served you in the way that God intended it to. Leave me a comment letting know, letting me know um, how you're feeling, how this has served you, because it is super encouraging to me to hear when God is working, how God is working, what he's doing, <laughs> and it's just really nice. So, I'm really hot right now, and I'm, I'm really, I'm really proud that this all kind of came together. Glory to God. Have a good day.